number 25. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, verse number 25. And this is, this is the conclusion of our series, Preaching to the Choir. Preaching to the Choir. Hebrews, chapter number 10, verse 24 and 25. Verses 24 and 25. When you find that, would you please stand on your feet as we give reverence to the reading of of the word of God. Amen. Amen. As we see in the Bible. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. This is the scripture coming up, verse 25, that I've been working towards for the last three weeks. Let's read that. No, let's don't read it together. I want to read it. I want you to hear it. Not forsaking, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves, what? Together. Virtually? Together. Online? Together. Hearsay? Together. Together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You may have your seat again. This is the conclusion to the series, Preaching to the Choir. And the reason why I call it Preaching to the Choir because nine times out of 10, the ones who need to hear it aren't here. And, and so they, they don't want to come to hear me. Maybe they can hear you the choir, because you know, if we took a survey, most people would come to hear New Beginnings sing before they come to hear me preach. Amen. Because because we're wired, uh, you know, to 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 the music. We're wired to uh, the way they they are worshiping. Don't get me wrong, but some of you uh, misunderstand worship for entertainment. Amen. And 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 so I'll guarantee you this: if if we if we if we had uh, a, a, a gospel, I'm going to do this, a gospel concert, and all of the leading gospel singers were there, uh, the, the, the renowned gospel singers were there, I bet you we would have to turn people away at the door because of, because of, because of the value of entertainment, mm -hmm. amen, but, but, but you know, uh, humble elder Lamont King is preaching at Assembly Chapel, so it's no big deal. And then I can watch it online and, and, you know, I don't have to be there. But that's not what the Bible says. Now, let's understand one thing very clearly. We'll do the Semitic prayer in a second. But let's understand one thing very clearly that we learned in Bible study. Many of us already knew transgression against the word of God is what? It's sin. Transgression against the word of God is sin. And if the word of God says forsake not the assembling of one another when you willfully decide for no reason not to come to church you are transgressing against the will of God am I right or wrong amen, amen. so let's do the semantic prayer so I can preach for about 20 minutes and leave father please bless the preaching and the preaching of your word bless me to hear do and grow in Christ as a result of receiving your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Jerry, you may retire for the evening. Let's give him a round of applause. Preaching to the choir. My objective on today, well, these, these, these last few weeks in this series was to equip the saints to help build the body of Christ. I took a little bit of time and, and, and we are going to use virtual church to our advantage. So I don't have to stand here during the introduction and go over the things that we have previously talked about building up to this week, amen? Go to your, your electronic device, go back and you can watch the sermons all over again or high point, highlight some of the points you want to see again and, and, and you can get caught up that way. But I do need to reiterate the fact that we talked about each and every member 
needing to be jointly fit to strengthen the body of Christ. Am I right? It, it, it's okay to say amen on Memorial Day weekend. It's critical that you know how important you, is, you are. <laughs> oh, now you want to make some noise. You brought the grandma. Preacher mess up now, everybody. <laughs> That's the loudest been in church all day. You need to realize how important you are to the body of Christ. You need to understand that there are no parts of the body, even though we have different functions, but there is no one person more important in the body of Christ than the other. We talked about how the hand cannot say to the foot, I have no need of you. We talked about how the eye cannot say to the ear, since I'm not the hearing, that I have no need of you. Because if there was not for the hearing, uh, for the ear, where would the hearing be? If there's not for the eye, where would the seeing be? So we all need each other. There's no big eyes and little U's. We talked about that. We talked about how the gift that you have is not a badge of honor, but the gift that you have is given by the same God. We all have different gifts, but they were given by the same God. Amen. As the physical body is, the, the, the limbs and everything in the body, they, they all have different usages and different reasons for being there, but it's the head, the same head that sends the signals throughout the body to make the many members function in unity. Unity is where our strength is, brothers and sisters. This is why the devil is so busy fooling people into believing that coming to church is no longer important. That's why the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. But he know that if you come into the house of God, Jesus is telling us, but I came that you might have life and have it more what? Abundantly. The devil does not want you living life more abundantly. He wants you to struggle. He wants you to believe that you're at the end of the line. He wants you to believe that it's time to go in the towel. He wants you to quit in your faith walk. But God, and he knows that if he can get you laying on your couch on Sunday morning, he knows if he can get you washing your car on Sunday morning, he knows if he can get you cutting your grass on Sunday morning, whatever it takes to keep you out of the house of God is to the devil's advantage. Church, I've been hard on this digging. Church is in my heart. Church is in your heart, then your heart ought to lead you to where the church is. If church is in your heart, it's not going to lead you to the refrigerator. If church is in your heart, it's not going to lead you to the park. If church is in your heart, it's going to lead you to the house of God. Because the heart is an important part of the body. Where would the body be <laughs> without the heart. And so this is what I've been driving. This is what, and, and if I could just get one person to recommit themselves to regular church attendance. And that, and we, in my definition, regular church attendance is every Sunday that you can be here. Amen. I understand the day and the time that we live in. I understand that people work. I understand vacations. I want you to take vacation. Amen. Amen. I, I want you to enjoy life. That's the whole balance of being a Christian. But you don't go on vacation every Sunday. <laughs> Some of you telling tales and don't work every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Stop calling me and the deacons and your brothers and your sisters making excuses on why you didn't come to church on Sunday. Let me work. Let me work, Junior, just for a few moments here. The book of Hebrews chapter number 10. Because in Hebrews chapter number 10, the author who is unknown is describing to us the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The author is explaining that there was an ultimate sacrifice 
And now you don't have to fly turtle doves anymore. Now you don't have to cut up bullocks, put them on the altar. There's no more animal sacrifice. There's no more days of atonement. When the priest, you know the story, when the priest would go into the temple with bells on his robe and a rope around his waist to pray forgiveness for the nation. He would go beyond the veil that no one else was allowed to go beyond because you are now into the place, I'm about to get happy, because now you are into the place called the Holy of Holies. There was the outer court, the inner court. Anybody could frolic around in the outer and inner court. But there was a veil, and beyond that veil was where the very presence of God was. Beyond that veil was the Ark of the Covenant with the mercy seat and the Spirit of the Lord hovering over top of the mercy seat and the priest would go in and if the priest had dirt on his hands if the priest had blood on his hands and he would drop dead and the people who were outside of the veil with the rope tied around his waist when they would hear the bell stop ringing then they knew that they was in trouble and they would drag the priest out but I'm so glad to announce on today, as the author has in the book of Hebrews, there's no longer a veil separating us from God and the presence. And we can now go into the Holy of Holies at will. Oh, I thought somebody would get happy about that because I don't have to rely on the preacher to go to God for me. I don't have to rely on the deacon to go to God for me. I don't have to rely on a prayer circle to go to God for me because they tell me that they hung my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ upon the tree and he became the curse. And when he became the curse, the veil was rent from top to bottom and I can walk into the most holy place. Oh, somebody ought to thank God right here. And so, and so, that was the best I had. If you, didn't sh if you couldn't clap right then, I don't, we, we can give the benediction. But, don't fool yourself. Because I've only got another hour when I'm done. All right. Somebody got mad at you. Somebody got mad at you. <laughs> and, and, and as we're moving, as we're moving on in, in, in the chapter, and we're understanding now that there's no more blood offerings and sacrifices now that the Lamb of God has shed his innocent blood for the remission of our sins. And then and, and here's the good part, folks. Here's the easy part. You see, you, 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 you have all of these uh, theologians and you have all of the bishops and the apostles and everything that try to make this so difficult. But I want you to show you how easy it is for your slate to be wiped clean. The Bible says in verse number 17 in the same chapter, he says in their sins, and iniquities will what? Will I remember no more? I need to tell somebody you're beating yourself over the head over something that God is no longer even concerned about anymore. You're condemning yourself to hell. You're making yourself feel bad about something that you've done a year ago when God says, I have wiped my hands of it. I've given you a clean slate. Go and sin no more. When are we going to wake up? You have to forgive yourself because God has already forgiven you. He says he is faithful and just to forgive. And then he says he's remembering it no more. And then 18 says now where remission of these is. There is no more offering. Someone say no more offering. No. There's no more offering for sin. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. Let me make that plain. There is nothing that you can do that Jesus has not already done for us. Amen. There's no more. Now all, all, of, all of these 
all of these, all of these sacraments that men are making up, all of these rituals that men are making up. The next thing you know, you're going you're gonna to be like, what's his name? June Jones drinking poisonous Kool-Aid, trying to follow all of these men and their wicked devices. The Bible teaches us in the book of Genesis that men's heart, man's heart, not God's heart, man's heart is evil continually. You cannot follow man. Don't put your trust in all of this new stuff that you're seeing on television. I have not, I have not, I've not read the Bible from cover to cover, but I have not seen in these pages where you got to pay somebody for a bottle of water from Jerusalem to sprinkle on your front porch. I have not seen where you got to pay somebody for a prayer towel to pray over. There's no more sacrifices. Keep your money, pay your tithes, and God is going to do what the Bible said God is going to do. There are no, I don't know how I can drop this into your soul. There are no more sacrifices according to the Bible. What did Jesus say on the cross? He said, I'm going to give you a clue. We're going to play Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to give you the first letter. I. T. Somebody just fill it in. It is what? That's what Jesus said. The sacrifices are finished. You don't have to look for another savior. It's finished. God is the God of our salvation and there are no other gods before him. Somebody say that with me. It is finished. 45 more minutes. And, and, and so we see here now, this is the system that the author is talking about when he say these things. The system that God has in place which is the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven through the body of Christ. But you see, the body of Christ has to be equipped. The body of Christ has to be strong. The body of Christ must respect the other members of the body of Christ. If you, let me make it plain again, Mike, if you are running your mouth about members in your own church, you are tearing down the body of Christ. You are weakening the body. If you are wondering why it seems like the enemy is always prevailing against the church, it's because you, by running your mouth, read your Bible on what it says about the tongue. The tongue will kill you. Why is the body of Christ killing itself and then expecting to be strong when it comes to fighting the enemy? Somebody explain what sense that makes to me. As I said before, you may not like the person across your aisle. You may not agree with what the person across the aisle do or say, but it's up to you to bridle your tongue. It's up to you to keep your mouth closed. What should you do? Here, here's a question that's easy to answer. What, what should you do if you see somebody in the body of Christ and, and, and you know that they're doing wrong, you know they're sinning, you know that they're not coming, they're coming short of the glory of God. What should you do? Should you get on the telephone and talk about them and continue to run them down and expose what they do? Or should you go to God and pray? If you're going to say all oh, my help comes from the Lord and you respect and honor the body of Christ, then you should go to the Lord on behalf of that part of the body that are weak, that's weak. They that are strong are to what? Bear the infirmities of the weak. When, when you hurt your arm, when you break your wrist, I'll tell you what, the other day, uh, a couple of years ago, when I was playing basketball, last time I picked up a ball on the court and cracked my ankle, everything that was good in my body rushed down to supply the nutrients and everything that I needed for the part of the body that was injured. Why don't the body of Christ do the same thing? Why don't preachers come out of the pulpit and start praying for people? Why don't the preacher come out of the pulpit, the limelight of the pulpit, to see what the needs of the people are? 
and address the problems in the body. You see, the, the, the people who want to come to church and hoop and holler and dance and shout and get all sweaty and greasy across the forehead, but you're a denying the weaknesses in the body. Sometimes church is what you can get out of it. Other times church is what you can put into it. You don't always come to see what the church can do for you. Why don't you get it fixed in your mind that I'm coming to church to see what I can do, how I can aid the body of Christ. But you cannot aid the body of Christ if you don't come. Paul said, Paul said, I'm I'm, 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 going to do this. I hope hope you understand what I'm about to say. Paul says that I cannot say uh, uh, to the ear that I have no need of you. But today's church, (laughs) maybe I shouldn't say this, but today's church, the eye is saying, where is the ear? (laughs) Because I need them. Why didn't the ear show up today? Where is the hearing? The foot is asking, where in the world is the hand? It's, It's a quarter after and the hand ain't here yet. I needed the hand at the call to worship and the hand came in at 15 minutes to 12. Now, I have to overcompensate. That's why, that's why folks are so tired when they leave church. I have to overcompensate because I have to be the hand, I got to be the arm, I got to be the foot, I got to be the hip, I got to be everything because I don't know if they're going to show up today. That's why the church is tired. If I had the ability... Sometimes I would have to walk around and preach walking on my hands because the feet didn't show up. Sometimes I'd have to sit in a chair like a monkey and pat my feet together because the hands didn't show up. It's funny, but it's true. It's funny, but it's true. Forsake not the assembly of one another. I'm gonna hasten to a close because I got some facts that I wanna teach you before I sit down in the next few moments. Because at this part of the scripture, are you learning today? Are you being encouraged today? I wanna encourage you to attend church regularly. We need each and every one of you. And, And in this part of the scripture, The Bible says in verse 24, let us consider one another. Let us consider one another. Like I said, it's not all about you and what you may need. But when we come to church, one of the most important things about coming together is considering one another. In the Greek, it's aleleus. And it means a mutual activity where believers encourage one another. This is one thing I love about Assembly Chapel. After church, you don't see a bunch of cliques forming together talking about the other clique. But but Assembly Chapel, it was like that before I got here, encourages one another. We pray for one another. We love one another. And this is a purpose of coming to church and coming together. It's not just the leaders who are directed to bring people together and pray, but it's each and every one of us. This is why the body is so important. I need you praying for me as much as you need me praying for you. The only difference is the microphone. You don't have to have a microphone to go into the Holy of Holies. You can pray from wherever you are and God hears. Why? Because he is omnipresent. And so this is why the Bible says we come together to provoke, to incite. We all know uh, when, when someone incites a riot, they're the ones who are running around stirring things up. Am I right or wrong? They're inciting a riot. Why can't you be the one to incite agape love in the church. 
Why can't you be the one that's running around staring people up in love? Why can't you be the one? Uh, so-and-so didn't speak to me at church today, but did you speak to so-and-so at church today? Why do you think that you're sitting so high on a pedestal that everybody's got to get in line and come talk to you first? What makes you so pretty and perfect that somebody got to open their mouth to you before you can open your mouth to them? Oh, I'm laying down some groundwork here on today. Because if anybody feels anything when they leave Assembly Chapel, they're going to feel like somebody loved them today. So I'm going to take it upon myself and I want you to follow the leader that we are going to incite love. We are going to provoke love unto good works. Oh, baby, I know you may have messed up and fallen off the wagon, but I love you so much that I'm going to help you get up and I'm going to help you get back on. Oh, I know you might have done some things you were not supposed to do yesterday, but God has forgiven you. God isn't thinking about it anymore. I forgive you if you sin against me. I'm going to be like God because I'm a child of God. I'm godless. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And if they're not going to bring it back up, I don't need to bring it back up. When is the body of Christ going to act like Christ? And here we are in conclusion. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, lifting one another up, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And here is my last problem and solution, offered solution. The Hebrew word for assembly is sp. Synagogo, Espi Synagogo, and it means above the synagogue. Espi is above, Synagogo is synagogue. And here's where most of us miss it when we just come to church. Let me work on this for a minute. When we just come to church, because that's what we're supposed to do. That's what I heard I was supposed to do. Because there's got to be a spiritual element when we come to church. And this word, espionago, nagago, means above the synagogue. That means we assemble ourselves physically in the church, but there's got to be a higher purpose that brings us together. And that higher purpose is the paraclete, is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit moving in the place. If you don't get anything out of church when you come to Assembly Chapel, it's not the pastor's fault, it's not the deacon's fault, it's not the worshiper's fault, it is your fault because you didn't come with the mind of the Spirit of God. You're in the synagogue, you're in the chapel, you're in the sanctuary, but you are not elevated above the physical activity. That's why you can jump and shout in church and leave here and act like the same devil you act like before you got here because all you did was came and set your fanny in a pew and you did not engage in the spiritual activity of the church. That's why you can break your habits. That's why you still talk the way you always talk. That's why you always walk the way you always walk. That's why you always hate people the way you always hate preaching it all on today. And so, when the day comes, let me give a warning, because every day we wake up, we're closer to our final destination. And I need to tell somebody on today, I, 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 I want to preach for about two seconds, but I want to tell somebody on today that the closer we get to the day approaching, the more trouble is coming your way. And the more trouble that comes your way, the more you're going to need the assembling of one another. Because when your weakest days, when you come to the church, somebody there may be strong. And that's where the body of Christ comes together and nurture them that are weak. Because like I said, the Bible teaches me that they that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. I need to set myself down now uh, because some of you are looking at me like Alice in Wonderland. Uh, but how many know that when you are weak, uh, you need somebody that's a little bit stronger? Uh, how many know that when I need some help, uh, I need somebody that can help me? Uh, I don't need to talk about folk going through worse than I am. Uh, but I need somebody that's going to elevate me. Uh, 
I need somebody that's going to encourage me. And what better place can I go to get some encouragement than the house of the Lord? What can the body do to help other parts of the body but to be strong for them? So grammatically and conclusively, stop trying to find reasons not to go to church and take those reasons you use to stay at home, to get yourself up and come to the house of God. Enter! Somebody shout enter. Enter is gifts with thanksgiving. Enter to his gifts with praise. I was glad when they said unto me, my body was hurting, but I was Church was important today. 